Welcome to Carolina Week Sports. I'm Brandon Curry. As we mentioned earlier, Butch Davis took a major step to leading North Carolina football back to national prom prominence with his first recruiting class. Here's a look at some of the big names coming to Chapel Hill next year. One of the biggest surprises was Marvin Austin, this guy, the number one ranked defensive tackle in the nation and the number seven player overall as ranked by Rivals.com. Rivals the ginormous Austin had narrowed his choices to Florida State and UNC before finally turning down Bobby Bowden. This guy is humongous. Another five-star player, Burlington native Dwight Jones, will be lining up opposite super sophomore Hakeem Nix as wide receiver in the fall. Here he is putting down a touchdown, hopefully to bring UNC some. Another surprise was Durham's Greg Little, a stellar athlete who backed out of a verbal commitment to Notre Dame and decided to stay close to home. Down at Keenan Stadium, the day started off good and kept getting better. Carolina added one big-time recruit after another. As you can see, the proof of Carolina's bright future is written on the wall. The letter of intent started rolling in early this morning. I think it's safe to say Coach Davis is pretty pleased. They've got great speed, uh, and they all have playmaking ability. And a lot of times you don't talk about playmaking ability when you talk about alignment. But when you take a look at Tydrick Powell and you take a look at Marvin Austin, and joining Austin, Little, and Jones next year, four-star player Mike Paulus ranked the fourth best quarterback and little brother of Duke point guard Greg Paulus. Other big names include Rashad Mason, a wide receiver from Tennessee, and Tydreek Powell, a defensive tackle from right here in the Tar Heel State. These future Tar Heels have propelled Butch Davis's first recruiting class into the top 20 in the country. Last year, led by freshman Tyler Hansbro, the men's basketball team gave the Cameron crowd another reason to go crazy. This year, UNC enters the matchup with a new class of decorated freshmen. Sports reporter Brittany Boosen says with both teams coming off a loss and bragging rights on the line, tonight's game is huge. Blue Devil veterans J.J. Redick and Sheldon Williams started out last year's Duke game confident that they could come away with a W. The Blue Devils were on fire in the first half as Redick drained a couple of threes. But the Heels didn't put up with J.J. and Sheldon's shenanigans for long. Tyler Hansborough and Carolina's other freshmen turned up the heat and crashed Duke's senior day. By the half, the Heels trailed by only one point. Reddick seemed to lose his touch in the second half, and the Heels went on an 11-0 run with 5.30 remaining. The Blue Devils struggled to cut the UNC lead to three, and the Cameron Crazies prayed, but Bobby Frazier said no way as he nailed those last free throws to seal the win. And for the first time since 1996, Duke fell to UNC on Duke's senior night. Hansbro was all smile, scoring 27 points to Reddick's 18. This year, the Heels have the veterans. But with both teams coming off a loss, both the Devils and the Heels will be hungry for victory. Sounds like the makings for yet another heart-pounding game between college basketball's biggest rivals. In Chapel Hill, I'm Brittany Bussian, Carolina Week Sports. And from one huge game to another, Jessica Woltz says the making of this year's Carolina Duke women's basketball game are nearly identical to last year's matchup, number one versus number two. The Lady Tar Heels head into Thursday's match, winning the last five straight against the other ladies in blue. This match should be another classic, just like last year the two teams enter first and second in the nation. While Duke has the higher seed, both teams enter undefeated and will face a sold-out crowd in Carmichael Stadium. Last year, the Heels were led to a 77-65 victory by Ivory Latta and her game-high 18 points. To win this year, Latta must once again control the tempo of the game. The Heels will also need post player Elena Larkins to dominate on the inside. If we see history repeat itself, Latta will once again show the crowd who is number one. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. In Chapel Hill, I'm Jessica Woltz, Carolina Week Sports. The men's tennis team had a double header on Tuesday facing Howard and then Campbell. Carolina won both matches 7-0 without even dropping a set. In the second match of the day, the Heels pushed straight through doubles in an hour. Number six, Taylor Fogelman, bageled his opponent, Alex Duvall. The rest of the team kept Campbell's score very low. The closest match was fought at number three, but Chris Kearney finished off his opponent at 6-3, 6-3. Next, UNC will be headed to Houston to face Rice and Vanderbilt. As I mentioned before, UNC is ranked 13th in the country for, uh, for uh, recruiting class. Excuse me, mm -hmm. Duke is ranked 89th. That's what I like to hear. Yeah, that's good news. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Brandon. For... 
Many of us relieve stress and express our emotions through writing. But if you're like me, you never think your words will actually be read by anyone else. Coming up, we'll find out why the town of Carborough wants to change that and have you send in your poems.